Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Steel Series Arctis Nova Pro. This is the wired version of the new interesting headsets from Steel Series, and this one is designed for PlayStation and PC. It's worth noting there are two different versions, one for Xbox and one for PlayStation and PC, but they're both designed to work with a multitude of devices. This one, for example, worked with PC, Mac, PlayStation, and Switch. It has a 3.5 mil connection to the high res certified game deck, and this is the Gen 2 of that game deck. And this is an unboxing and review video. I'm gonna be talking to you about the experience I've had with this headset, what it was like to use, the highlights and lowlights of it, and a lot more besides. Now this is basically a new version of the SteelSeries Arctix Pro Plus game deck. So the wired headset with high-res audio that I reviewed quite some time ago now. And this is an updated and improved version with a number of interesting and new highlights that make it worth talking about. This is a fantastic headset for a number of different reasons. Now I'm using the microphone on the headset now to give you an idea of what the capture quality is like. I also want to talk a bit more depth about that because that is also one of the highlights of this. It uses a so-called AI-powered ClearCast Gen 2 noise cancelling microphone with a lot of different customization options that you can carry out within SteelSeries GG software. And I want to start by saying that this headset would definitely give you the best experience of using it on PC versus, say, using it on PlayStation. Now, you can get Tempest 3D audio on PlayStation 5, and the Xbox version will give you Microsoft Spatial Surround Sound on Xbox as well, but you also have a multitude of options in terms of sound on PC, and that is one of the things that you see stuck on the game deck itself, because it says... There's an important download for chat mix on PC, but also that you can use SteelSeries sonar technology within SteelSeries GG to customize your audio. And that is actually going to lead to a setup for streaming purposes where you can set up your audio in interesting ways. I'm going to do a separate video on how to set this headset up if you're interested in streaming, if you want to broadcast your audio and obviously your video on Twitch or YouTube or wherever else, because this headset has some interesting highlights there, but it also has customizable audio with multiple different EQ profiles set up specifically for various different games, and I'm going to show some of that later on, where it essentially has tuned surround sound audio, highly tuned audio, to deliver a better positional audio for your gameplay. So a number of interesting highlights already, and as you can see when you get out of the box, there are a number of other things going on here. You have several cables, you have a windshield for the microphone, which I do think is necessary because you probably already noticed some of the wind being picked up by the microphone as I'm talking. And I'm not using the windshield at the moment, but I wanted to de demonstrate that. And then obviously a very different design to the Arctic's Pro lineup. It's kind of similar in some ways. It still has a similar sort of headband design, for example, but they have moved away from the ski goggle into a slightly different set up. You'll also see that the outer ear cups are actually removable as well, so you can pop off the covers, the caps, on either side of this headset, and you can remove the headband, and this is because you can actually purchase additional headbands and speaker plates, as they're known, for this headset as well, so you can boost the design of it, change the colours, so you can buy red, lilac, uh, green, and rose quartz ones, so you can change the style and the look and feel of it. But what you're seeing, and what I was struck by when I got it out of the box, is a very premium looking headset, really, really nice quality to it. There's no RGB lighting, there's some really nice accents, and a good solid build quality. Also a retractable microphone that you'll see buries straight into the headset itself. And you can peel off the ear cushions, which are just held on around the drivers, just a little lip around there. And as you can see, they are very squashy. And this is one of the things that I noted immediately when I'm putting it on my head because I found that these ear cups are ridiculously comfortable. They are seriously comfortable and very pleasant. Also, this isn't an active noise cancelling headset, and it's worth noting that the wireless version of this headset is, and I'm going to be doing a review on that in the near future, and probably a comparison video to talk about the differences between the two as well. But what it does do is it does block out a fair amount of noise with sort of passive noise cancellation, because it has this sort of faux leather 
memory foam cushioning, really soft cushioning there. And also you can see just how much the headband and the ear cups are adjustable. So you can adjust the headband up and down, so you see on the outside, that's now adjustable where it wasn't previously on the Arctic Pro lineup, as well as the headband itself. So you'll see that inner band that sits on top of your head, that's also flexible. But you see there's also a lot of twist and tilt in the ear cups as well. So you can actually position this headset really nicely on the head. It has a good solid clamping force to it as well. So it really clamps tightly onto the head and gives you a good solid contact with your head, covering the ears really nicely and therefore blocking out a lot of external noise and just sitting really comfortably as well. You can see it stretches out fairly nicely and you can also adjust the inner headband so this is the bit that obviously sits on your head rather than having any sort of metal sitting on your head you have this material strap here and that's adjustable on these points on the side I do find it a little bit fiddly as you'll see it does pop off if you don't put it back in properly but you can see it is adjustable in various different points so you can adjust this inner headband and you can also extend the headband near the ear cup as well. And I found the comfort and the fit on this sublime. This is really good, a comfortable headset and easy to wear. One downside that I have noted is it is particularly hot at the moment and the ear cups obviously with that sort of faux leather finish on them do result in quite a warm feel after some time. You do get end up getting quite hot ears and just hot overall. However, I can happily wear this headset all day long and into the evening. Superbly comfortable or both on top of the head and on the ears. The ear cups are nice and large reasonably deep as well there's no horrible pressure and any pressure that you do have from the ear cups is just fantastic because it's really nicely padded very soft on the inside and just around on your face as well so i found that that comfort level is fantastic and a really nice setup in a variety of ways so a really sort of premium sturdy feeling finish here very nice high quality headband good solid design it's a steel headband on the outside so the design of it should stand up to use and abuse over time the setup is fantastic out of the box now you can see a number of highlights here so obviously you have a carry bag you have the DAC this is the important part this is a wired gen 2 DAC so this is a quad DAC which will give you the conversion into high res audio so you can get up to a 24 bit 96 kilohertz high res sample rate on PC you'll see that in the box it comes with a 3.5 mil connect to connect the headset up to that control box and then you also get two USB cables so USB A to USB C and you can connect up multiple devices to this in theory so for example you could connect up a PC with one USB cable and then you could connect up say for example Nintendo Switch is one of the options they give or PlayStation with the other one connect them both up and then switch between those devices depending on what you want to use so it means you don't have to keep plugging and unplugging cables you can have multiple things connected you also have 3.5 mil line in and line out and i'll show you what that's for later on or one of the options of what you can do with that as well so a few different customization options there obviously you can put that control box on the desk near you and then it can be used to control the volume but also to adjust the chat mix you get a separate audio for voice chat so on disc Discord, for example and your standard overall audio which means that you can dial between them so if you want to turn your friends down and the game audio up you can dial it one way or the other and that controller gives you the option to do that as well as jumping between various settings whether that's switching to USB 1 or USB 2 switching between those sources turning the volume up and doing other things so the equalizer settings for example but you can also obviously dive into steel series sonar software as well on the headset itself, not very many controls. You basically have a mic mute button and then a volume wheel. There aren't any onboard controls here really. And that's mostly because you only have a 3.5 mil connection running out of it. So it doesn't have any sort of intelligent controls on it. Now what I wanted to do briefly is just to show it alongside the Steel Series Arctic Pro Wireless. So this is obviously the flagship previously of the Steel Series lineup. So you can see some similarities in the way the headband sort of connects 
headsets to the headset itself and also obviously the retractable microphone design there has changed also the speaker plates on the outside are now smaller for example it juts out a little bit further and obviously the style has changed quite a bit now I do have some different plates and uh, different color ski headband on here that you, what you'd normally get obviously it's a bit more striking that's an aftermarket sort of addition or an extra purchase from Steel Series rather than the standard look but you can see the sort of size and shape of it so they haven't changed a lot in terms of that shape of the ear cup or the shape of the design of the ear cup so similar there but what you do get is you now get these premium sort of faux leather soft plush memory foam cushioned ear cups previously you didn't actually this is also an additional upgrade so those aren't the standard ear cups on the Arches Pro Wireless but you will see similar sort of squashiness however I really must say that I really found these ear cushions to be fantastically comfortable when I put them on I spoke to someone else that's also testing out the headset and he's the same they are some of the squashiest most pleasant ear cups that I've had on my ears in terms of faux leather and despite being a bit hot because it does get hot and bothered it does deliver a much better noise cancellation than you would get with like a fibre or a material finish rather than the faux leather so a much better setup there overall also ditching that ski band design on the head band has led to a bit more ease in adjusting the position of that I think so overall is a bit nice but you can see some of the same sort of things so they have kept some things similar the fact that you can remove those speaker tags from the outside for example and swap them out is pretty neat they're also again held on ever so slightly with magnets you can see they just fell off <laughs> the pro nova there a little bit but you, that's just because i hadn't put them back on properly but a similar sort of logic so some things are the same some things are significantly different obviously the pro wireless is a bit more high-end that's the original flagship i'm going to do a comparison with the nova wireless soon which will be the similar that'll be more similar comparison but i just wanted to demonstrate what the two headsets look like side by side because the Nova lineup is sort of replacing the Arctis Pro lineup. Now a little bit more of a look at the DAC. As I said this gives you access to control various different things. There's a little tutorial when you first set it up talks you through the different things that you can use it for. Obviously that main thing is your volume wheel there and then the circle next to it next to the Steel Series logo that's basically a back button. But you can roll this volume wheel and you can press it in and you can press and hold it to go into various different settings. So you can use it for standard for example just to adjust the volume, turn it up and down. If if you push it in you then have the option to adjust the chat mix and the game audio and then obviously you can also push and hold it and go into the settings and from there you can then access various other things so you can customize sound on the equalizer and other things so you can see it just talks you through the other settings here and gives you basically a tutorial setup of this now it is worth noting that I did have a problem with this DAC where I updated the firmware and there was a failure in updating the firmware and it actually temporarily bricked the DAC. There is a fix I'm going to do a video on which I found sort of works. So I'm going to do a video separately on how to fix it if you have the same problem but just take care with the firmware updates I would advise because it could be problematic but you can see if you dive into the various different settings you can change a number of different things there's custom eq settings you can adjust the gain level you can change the side tone on your microphone so that's the levels of how much of yourself you're hearing through the microphone when you're talking which is definitely worth turning up if you want to be able to hear yourself because the passive noise cancellation from the ear cushions means you can't hear yourself very well fantastic if you want to block out noise from surrounding environment and cars going by outside, fan noise and other things but it's worth fiddling around with that. One of the other things as well is that as default the microphone picks up a lot of background noise I found however as I will show you later on you can tweak quite a lot of sound settings to adjust and customize that and that's one of the highlights. You can see there are also options for line in and line out so if you're 3.5 mil coming in and going out so if you have 3.5 mil cable which you have to purchase separately it's not included you can run the line out from this control box to your streaming pc for example or you can do things with line in so you could run if you have a phone with a 3.5 mil connection you can run 3.5 mil from that out of your phone and into this device and then have music playing through there perhaps as one of the options you can also see here that i've 
set to 96 kilohertz 24 bit it does not default to that it's worth knowing that you have to change settings in windows sound settings in order to get it to do that and that's one of the things that makes it premium on pc is the fact that you can crank it up to that higher frequency response better sample rate as standard it has 10 hertz to 40,000 hertz frequency response but as I said, you can crank up the sample rate to get a better quality of sound out of it and it gives a richer experience. There are also a mass of programmable options in the Steel Series sonar setup, so it's really good to be able to use that and then tweak the sounds. And I think you have to do a lot of customization to get it sounding right. But overall, what you can see so far is a fantastic headset for a number of different reasons. Superb comfort, great sound. I think it's really rich sounding, blocks out a lot of external noise, really loads of customization in terms of what you can do with EQ settings and things as well. But it's got a great base to it and a really good warmth and a really good fit on the head and really good comfort all day long. Fantastic in a number of different ways. Also, that DAC gives you access to ability to other things. So if you don't like the microphone and you want to be able to use an external microphone, you can see the quadcast here, for example, from HyperX. You can plug in the 3.5mm connection into the line in and then plug a 3.5mm connection into the microphone externally. So again, this is an additional purchase of a 3.5mm cable, but it doesn't cost that much. Purchase that, connect your mic up to your DAC, and then you can mic monitor the microphone from the headset. Obviously mute your microphone on the headset and then you can just use a broadcast quality mic or a better quality microphone with ease. Now there are some reasons the mic on this is decent anyway, but that's worth bearing in mind. But you can see the back of the DAC here and the tweaks that you can do with the things that you can plug in. So there are options for a variety of different things that you can do with it. And that could be beneficial in a number of different ways, especially if you're a streamer or a content creator, or you just want to do other things like monic monitoring an external microphone. Now I want to show some of the things that you can and should do in Windows if you're using it on PC. Before I do that, I just want to thank you for making it this far in the video. If you've made it this far, congratulations. You're a very special kind of person. Why don't you hit that subscribe button to say thanks for all the effort I've put in so far. <laughs> Hopefully you found it useful and I'll give you an interesting insight. But well, there's a lot more to come because I think there's a lot more that's important to know about this headset. So stick with me some more. Next thing to do is to go into sound settings. Now you'll notice that I have Steel Series Sonar set up here uh, immediately and you'll see that. I'll get to that in a second, but one of the things I want to show is what I was talking about earlier with the high res audio. One of the more important things you need to do, and this is in Windows 11, but you can do the same in Windows 10, is to open your sound settings and scroll down to more sound settings. And then when you're in the sound settings, you then need to go into the headphones. So Arch is Nova Pro default device, obviously, then click properties and then go over to advanced and you'll see from this drop down, I think it's usually set to 24 bit, 48 kilohertz or maybe 16 bit. You want to go all the way up to 24 bit, 96,000 hertz. Make sure you select that and click apply. Now, if you glance at the DAC, you should see it change because there is a little indicator at the top that I showed a shot of earlier on that tells you what sample rate you're on. You want to make sure you're on that higher resolution sample rate. This will improve the sample rate and bit depth and the audio quality. This can be beneficial if you use something like Tidal and you have high-res audio through that, but it will also affect the sound you get from the game and the range of audio that you can get from the game, and you'll be surprised the difference it makes. Now, obviously, you also have the option to go into the spatial surround sound settings here and turn on Windows Sonic Sound or DTS Headphone X or DTS X if you have them or Dolby Atmos if you've got separate licenses for that. Those aren't included as standard but they are worth bearing in mind and playing around with. You can also see we obviously also have the microphone set. One of the things you will notice though is the mine set to the sonar microphone and the reason for that is I noted that the standard mic actually gives you quite a bit of feedback so it picks up quite a lot of mic noise as standard. So the next thing of important to do is to download SteelSeries engine software. SteelSeries GG includes engine and sonar. Sonar is a separate download but you need to make sure you have that because it will give you the best audio experience. Quickly what we're going to do though is we're going to go into the standard Arctis Nova Pro settings. 
so you can see in here you have a fairly basic setup in what you can do with the headset in here you'll notice that the EQ settings are actually disabled by default but you can change between some of the presets in here and you saw some of them at hardware level you also notice that you can adjust the microphone side tone so again this is how much of your mic you can hear through there as well now this is output here for the speakers and streaming setup. That's the 3.5 mil connection line out. So if you're connecting it to a streaming PC, for example, then you'd use this or speakers. So if you're running 3.5 mil connection to speakers, so occasionally you want to switch to speakers as an option, you can do that there. In the settings, you can also set the OLED brightness. There's not much going on here, basically. Where things become interesting is in Sonar. So Sonar gives you a range of options, a variety of different things. One of the important points of note here, for example, is you'll see that there's game and chat and microphone. So essentially what it does is it takes two different levels of audio and gives you the flexibility to change between them. So you'll see that you have headphones and then you have headphones in here as well. So that's the output. So that's where the sound's going through. But what it does is it puts it into window sound. So you'll see when you go into the window sound settings that we have Steel Series Sonar Chat and we have Steel Series Sonar Gaming. So those are two different options that you will set up and use for gaming purposes. And I'm going to do a separate video if you want to use this for streaming as well to talk a bit more about this. But you also have the microphone under the sound as well. It's worth bearing that in mind. And you'll see that you have headphones as a separate thing. But essentially, this allows you to control the levels. So for chat mix, you can see the chat mix down the bottom here but it wants you to use the hardware dial. So again, on the DAC, you just press the volume wheel button in once, and then that will change the chat mix. And you can see if I roll the dial, it also adjusts it in here. If you turn the dial to the right, for example here, you can see that's going towards chat. And if you turn it to the left, that's going towards the game. So the way this works is if you open up something like Discord, Essentially, what we're going to do is we go into the voice settings in Discord, and then what you do is you would choose from this drop down Steel Series Sonar Chat, and then your input device is Steel Series Sonar Microphone, and that's important as well because essentially what we're doing is we're applying microphone settings to those. So now what we're doing, basically when you go to play a game, if you are playing with your friends on Discord and you can hear them talking, that's coming through your chat mix. So then if you want to hear more of them, let's say they're being quiet, you can dial it towards them. But if they're being too noisy and you want to hear more of the game, because you need to focus on hearing footsteps, you just push it the other way and dial it towards that direction. That then eliminates the sound of them and allows you to concentrate more on what you need to be able to. So it's obviously a good balance of that. Now the game settings, I'm going to go into a bit more depth in a minute and try and demonstrate what they can do. But you can see you have a number of different settings in here, intelligent settings for changing things. First of all, there's a configuration tool up here, which allows you to basically choose from a selection of preset equalizer modes depending on the game you're playing. So this is basically tuned equalizer settings specifically for various different games. You can see COD Warzone, Apex Legends, CSGO, Escape from Tarkov. There's generic settings for FPS footsteps. There's settings for Forza 5, for example, Battlegrounds 2 for Rainbow Six Siege, which is a game that I like to play, and I'll show you that in a second. And then just some for music and movies as well. And you can choose between those. So if I just select one, if we go, for example, for Escape from Tarkov, you can see that it changes the line and the equalizer in various different ways. It puts different points in it and adds things in. You'll notice that you can also obviously customize your own you get a flat line as standard, but you can tweak it and adjust. You can put points on here, and you'll see it also talks about the base, sub bass lows, mid range, and the highs. And you can customize each of those. You can adjust the points as you want. So you can actually play around with this and customize it the way you want it. But you can also just select from specific soundscapes that have been set up and designed for you. And I found some of these are hit and miss. So, for example, the standard one for Rainbow Six Siege actually takes out quite a lot of the bass and makes it very tinny and that's on purpose because that means that you can hear the footsteps a bit more but I feel this is something you have to play around with. Also you have a spatial audio setting down here. 
Make the sound come from all around you to give you a better awareness of your surroundings. But you turn that on and that obviously adjusts the audio as well. And you can see here it says tune the slider towards performance to improve the senses of directionality and localization, ideal for FPS games, or tune it the other way towards immersion to improve environmental effects for a more realistic sound experience, which is ideal for story-driven games and movies. Adjust the speaker position at the distance to customize. So again, you get to adjust this. So you want performance, give you FPS sound or immersion to give you more realistic sound and then you can make the speakers feel like they're closer to you and adjust this. I think this is a personal preference thing that you have to play around with but I certainly found from my experience that you can really sense a difference in the positional audio. It really makes quite a big difference to it. You can also obviously go in and change other things like you can adjust the gain level so you can increase the gain and give you like an overall boost to that sound too. For the chat audio, you can also change sounds in here so you can adjust the sound of what you're hearing through the chat mix, which is quite interesting because you'll notice there's AI noise cancellation. So you can actually remove problems from your friend's microphones by turning on the Clearcast AI noise cancellation and you can even change the sound of what they're like. You'll see less nasal, for example. You can make them a deeper voice. You can give broadcast quality to it. You can change various other things in here and all sorts but you'll probably be more interested in what you can do with your own microphone so now i'm in this setting and you can see that i have clearcast ai noise cancellation turned on and it's set somewhere in the middle and i think this is pretty essential and important part of this and it's worth noting you probably do a whole video separately on the different settings of this but i found that out of the box without noise cancellation turned on there's actually quite a lot of background noise being picked up by the microphone it has quite a lot of noise to it picking up fan noise and just a bit of a hum where it's picking up sound and it doesn't seem that great in terms of what it's doing there but this clearcast noise cancellation makes quite a significant difference to that so I'm going to play around with these settings and change them now to just demonstrate that to you so for example if I turn this off and I'm quiet for a second you'll probably hear quite a bit of background noise and if I turn it back on again you'll notice that gets eliminated and it's not completely gone but it's definitely a lot better you can also choose from a number of other different settings so you can see that we have a balanced one that adds a bit of a difference in there you can add a broadcast quality sound to it you can change and select deep voice which is probably unnecessary for me because I've already got a fairly deep voice you can make yourself less nasal which might be beneficial you can also choose from a variety of other settings so we can set a noise gate for example so if we're not using AI noise cancellation you could set a noise gate on this and that would therefore eliminate some of that background noise pickup so I notice here for example if I set it at minus 26 decibels that takes out a lot of the standard background noise that's there as standard just being picked up. Smart voice automatically keeps your voice in a range so it never gets too loud or inaudible. Basically that's leveling you out, automatically leveling you and making sure you're sitting in the right sort of volume. Because see you can see there's lots of different customization and you have to tweak it really to fit your own personal voice and your surroundings and your environment but there's loads of customization in here so you definitely should use sonar because it makes a big difference to how you sound as well so lots of different things in there and lots of different capabilities in terms of what you can do in the next clip in the second stick with me now because basically what I'm going to do now is demonstrate the sound differences that the mixer makes in terms of what you can do for game audio so the configuration so basically I'm going to run Rainbow Six Siege and I'm going to show you the different sounds between them I'm not sure how this will come across in your headphones but you can see how you can switch between the levels and the different options and the difference that makes what I found as I said is with everything off you have a nice deep bass to it when you start playing with configuration sometimes the spatial audio and the 
other settings eliminates a lot of that sound but it leaves in a lot of the surrounding environmental and positional audio that you need so if you're playing a fast paced FPS game you need to be able to hear footsteps and other things selecting one of these settings for example this Rainbow Six Siege one you can see it takes out some of the bass but it adds in a lot of other elements that really make it easier to hear what's going on and who's coming for you and then play against them in that way so hopefully you will see that, that will be very useful this has been the provoke prawn drop me a comment let me know what you think of this headset and what you think of this review and also subscribe for more this has been the provoke prawn thanks for watching stick with me to the end locate the hostage Double time. Hostage Me. secure. Stay alert. Extract the hostage. Keep the hostage safe. Hostiles approaching. the hostage. Extraction successful. Good work. 